Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we're in Egypt uh, today. Uh, I met with uh, President El Sisi and the Minister of Defense, Sobi. Uh, we had a good discussion. I listened to President El Sisi about the threats he's facing, that Egypt is facing right now. Uh, we continued, basically, the discussion that we started earlier this month at the Pentagon, and we agreed on the need for a renewed and strong security partnership. Uh, as the new administration comes in, I was the first member of the President's Cabinet to visit Egypt. Uh, Minister Sobi and I discussed the efforts to counter terrorism and secure the borders in this very complex security environment. Uh, you have seen the threats manifested against Egypt. They have included, of course, terror bombings against Egyptian citizens in the Sinai uh, in greater uh, Egypt, uh, against Egypt's who are Egyptians who are Christian. Uh, Egyptian citizens uh, are taking these attacks on their military and the Sinai and on the Coptic churches as attacks on all of Egypt. And that was made very clear to me. But I left Cairo very confident, very confident in the avenues we have to advance our military to military relationship, which has been a bedrock and has stood solid all these years. Uh, so may I take a question? Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for doing this. There's been a lot of discussion in Washington in light of the events involving both the carrier and the Moab bombing uh, in the past week. And I wanted to ask you first whether or not you were informed beforehand uh, uh, by General Nicholson that he was going to drop the Moab and whether or not you think uh, American field commanders have been uh, considering the strategic implications of some of their actions uh, in the last couple of weeks. And a third uh, connection to that is why has there been no uh, discussion of the after effects of the Moab, no BDA or anything like that? Well, I mean, we take into account the uh, strategic effects of everything we do. That said, uh, we give parameters uh, to our subordinate commanders in the field. Uh, it, when you are in a conflict situation, uh, you have got to leave initiative in the hands, delegate initiative to those that you consider competent to do so, to, uh, to carry out the, uh, the authorities that you're giving them. In this case, uh, in Afghanistan, uh, they have been engaged in that fight up in that corner against ISIS uh, elements up there for some time. I was kept informed sometimes on a daily basis of how the fight was going, of what the options were, and I will not get into what authorities are delegated because those are the specific things that allow for the urgency and the speed of operations in the field. Those are things, command and control issues inside uh, the delegation that I, I just don't want to go into. But there was no surprise uh, in terms of the effect of that battle at all. The battle was going on and we were going to use what was necessary to break ISIS. And we've made that very clear uh, in every theater where we're up against ISIS. And I would point to uh, right now to West Mosul where uh, it's now in the news that there has even been uh, crude chemical weapon use thrown uh, against the uh, surrounding Iraqi forces as they move in. We are doing the same thing with the initiative that we give to our forces that are advising in Syria. And of course, we consider the strategic effects in each one of those cases of what we're doing. At I the same you time, do, but do you think your field commanders do? I have no doubt they do. And if they didn't, I'd remove them. And you were told beforehand about the I, I, I'm not going to get into the specifics, Helene, because that would, uh, I, I do not want to articulate clearly what the delegation is. Uh, just rest assured it's to the lowest competent level, and they are trained and they have my commander's intent. BDA? All righty. Mr. Secretary, I think Wait, we're can we just get the BDA question? Yeah, that's what BDA. Uh, what the was second the, part of her question yeah, was why, why hasn't there been a BDA on the Moab? You know, as you're aware, uh, for many years we have not been uh, calculating the results of warfare by simply quantifying the number of enemy killed. You all know 
of the corrosive effect of that sort of metric back in the Vietnam War, and it's something that has stayed with us all these years, that you don't want to start calculating things as far as what matters in the crude terms of battle casualties. If you were to look at World War II and consider that if there's a lot of casualties, then the war must be going terribly, then the last three months of World War II would have been the worst days of the American War uh, because of what was going on. Uh, we stay away from BDA in terms of uh, number of enemy killed. Uh, I know you all often ask us about it, and you've seen us uh, pretty shy about answering those questions, and this is the same situation. You're just seeing it reflected here on the tactical level. But it's, it's pretty much a, uh, it, it is con uh, continuing our same philosophy that we don't get into that. Um, plus, uh, frankly, digging into tunnels to count dead bodies is probably not a good use of our troops' time when they're chasing down the enemy that's still uh, capable. All right, sir. Thank you very much.